Joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show, courtesy of our social media grand maester, as he cares to be known, TJ Jefferson, at 2 Jiggy, for those who care to follow our social media grand Howard. maester. Uh, you've known this uh, gent for quite some time. We're thrilled to have here on the Rich Eisen Show. This is what we call, um, you know, high quality booking, not just because of who he is and what day it is. It's the 18th anniversary of Punked making its debut on MTV. But we're kind of stepping in it. There's Big Bears news, and he's a yeah. Big Bears fan. Ashton Kutcher here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, sir? I am delightful. How are you? I am better for talking to you. All right, screw it. Give me our favorite T.J. Jefferson story. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let's just jump. Let's just jump right in. What do you got for me, Ashton? Oh, oh man. Oh man. You you know what the thing is? Is that that? Um, uh, well, boy. So I I I have to think long and hard about this because T.J. has so much compromise on me that. Uh, that uh, <laughs> I don't want to play. I don't want to play an exchange war with this man. Wow, what, what is this um, photograph we're seeing right here? Let's help uh, Ashton out. It's you and him in a pool. And what? How yeah. old is this photograph that we're looking at right here? That that picture is from July the third, two thousand and one. Damn. We uh, we had just moved. He and I used to be roommates. We didn't. We never said that. And uh, he bought that house. He was lucky. You know, he was nice enough to allow me to live there with him. And uh, we moved in the first day of July, and we decided everyone would have a 4th of July party. So why don't we have a 3rd of July party? And, and this is the photograph we're seeing, huh, Ashton, yeah. on the screen here. That, uh, uh, it, it must be. I can't see the photo, but right. I'm, I'm assuming that it is. It is that. <laughs> yes, it is. You can take the trust. So, it, it, uh, so uh, Okay, I'll give, you, I'll, give you, I'll give you a great uh, T.J. Jeff. You don't have story. to, by the no, way. No, no, he does. Know. Please turn his no, microphone no, no, off. No, no, this is, this, okay. this, is, this is a quality yes. one. This, this is, uh, I'll put a little shine on you. Okay. Uh, so, so... You know, TJ and I, TJ was like, we worked together for a while and started traveling around the world and doing various things. And when I, I would go on promotional tours for various films and things. And at one point we ended up in Australia. Um, and and I, I think I had to work the next day or something. And TJ was like, I'm going to go out. <laughs> and so he goes out to a, a nightclub um, and basically get kicked out because the bouncer at the at the nightclub thought that his Altoids were drugs because they'd never <laughs> seen Altoids before, and so they they kicked him out. <laughs> um, and and the, the guy looked at the, his like can of Altoids and thought like TJ was like drug dealing inside of his nightclub. <laughs> And all you wanted was fresh breath, That's DJ, was, just in case you met someone at the club. I you was just, trying to talk to this Sheila, as they call him down there. And, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> more, so more things change the more they stay the same, basically what you're saying. True not. You're here in 2021. Ashton Kutcher here on the Rich Eisen Show. 18 years ago, Punked debuted tonight. Uh, Ashton, how did that show come about for you? Where, where, where did that one come from all those years ago for you? Um, so when I was growing up, there there were these uh, audio tapes that you could get of these guys, the Jerky Boys. Of course. Mm -hmm. And and the Jerky Boys would like call and prank phone call people, and they would play these characters in in their prank phone calls. And I just thought it was the funniest thing uh, when I was when I was younger. Um, I still think it's really funny, um, but with, with through a slightly different lens today. But I always thought that that was that was the funniest thing, and, I, and and I watched Candid Camera and things like that. But I felt like Candid Camera never quite took it far enough, yes. um, and it be, and, and it just didn't have like the edge of like the Jerky Boys that would they they would go all the way there. Um, and so that's that's really where I, and I started batting back and forth with my producing partner at the time. This idea of like, can we make a show that's like the Jerky Boys? And none of my representation wanted me to do it. They were like, you know, you're an actor. You're not going to be seen as a serious actor if you go and do a reality show. And I was like, no, I want to make this and I want to do this. And, and I was doing the 70s show at the time and, and shooting some films. And, uh, and I was like, no, I'm going to do it. I want to do it on MTV. And then I got the MTV and they're like, okay, we, we'll do this show, but you've got you to pull the pranks on celebrities. And I was like, all right. 
uh, and, and that's 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 sort of how it came to be. So when you're saying you didn't think uh, Candid Camera committed or to the bit or committed to the prank uh, far enough, are you referring to making Justin Timberlake think his home was being repoed by the IRS, for instance? That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> like like th- making Beyonce think that she ruined Christmas because uh, she dropped the tree that was like, you know, the ceremonial Christmas tree in the middle of, you know, Century City. Um, like having <laughs> having undercover agents come and bust the gambling ring uh, and, and like bust through windows, like that kind of thing. So, which celebrity was the most upset or by being punked, Ashton? I imagine when it was first starting, they were probably been like, "What gives?" And then, obviously, when the phrase even got out there that people, you know, pulling pranks in just everyday life, the word punking somebody to this day still even exists. Before you reached that, I imagine, or even when you did reach that sort of status, which celebrity got the most upset with you? I mean, I think the celebrity that's most upset is me because I don't own this show. <laughs> You've <laughs> been punked. <laughs> but but, right. but I, wasn't, I wasn't wise enough back then to, to know that I should own it. Um, but I think, you know, the people that took it, that, that had the hardest time with it were comedians. Huh. Um, which is interesting. You'd think that they would love it, um, but I. Uh, but comedians like to be in control of the joke. They don't want the joke to be on them unless they're making the joke about themselves. And so, oftentimes, we would do a punk on a comedian, and they would get really. Um, they just wouldn't be happy about it. Um, and then there were a couple instances where, like. You know, like, I think A-Rod was in the middle of, like, a trade deal, and he was talking about it with friends, and and that was on camera, and he's like, no, you got to burn the tapes. Um, And and then there was one (laughs) where somebody pulled out a gun. Whoa. Uh, Huh? No, I'm just listening. I'm like, whoa, somebody pulled out a gun, huh? Yeah, somebody pulled out a firearm in the middle of it, and it got got a little heated. Um, but uh, you know, at the end, everybody was cool with it. I don't think anybody holds a grudge, uh, on it. I I think it's just in, in that moment, um, people would get pretty upset that, you know, like Zach Graff, like beat up a kid. It was like, people got upset. He beat up a kid. He he literally (laughs) beat somebody up because he was was a kid. There was like a, we, we, we had a kid that. He he wasn't a kid, but he looked like he was a kid. Yeah, and he was like spray painting his Porsche uh, in a parking lot. And he just started like he started getting physical with him, uh, and we had to go. We had to go calm that down. Yeah, you had to <laughs> tap that one out because it. Okay, so at some point a line gets crossed, and so you're saying Ashton Kutcher that a Rod was caught on tape talking about inside uh, baseball stuff, <laughs> literally, and thus. When the punking was revealed, he's like, "Yeah, you're you're not airing that." Did anything air from yeah. him, or did no? It, no, we we literally we we pulled the film and destroyed it in front of him because that was the thing about the show, which is, um, uh, unlike a lot of the other shows that are out there, we every single person who was ever on punked signed a release yeah. that said it's okay to air this, right? Like. We didn't air anything of anyone without their permission. And, and you know, it seems that line has been crossed nowadays. But back then, that, that, that was the deal. And, and we, you know, we honored that. Like, if, if we got to the end of it and someone was like, no, not cool, we're not airing, you, you can't air it, we didn't. And, and in that case, he, he made us destroy the, um, destroy the tapes. Ashton Kutcher here on the Rich Eisen Show. You think it could be done today? I mean, social media being what it is, it could be shared left and right, up and down. You know that you're you're the first guy, first individual to get a million folks on Twitter. That, by the way, was 12 years ago. Um, Do you think this could be done again, rebooted, Ashton? Yeah, with the right with the right people, it it could get done again. I I actually think the interesting way to do it would be um, do it through like NFTs. Um, and like actually shoot a punk and make make the prank itself uh, and the video and NFT where 
there was a royalty right where the person who got pranked actually owned a piece of it for perpetuity, and then people could buy it, sell it, trade it. Whoa. Let's pitch that out. Uh, me, yeah. you, Thanks, TJ. Bro. Let's <laughs> <laughs> put that thing together. Let's uh, let's pitch that out, uh, Ashton. Hey, Rich. You know, one thing <laughs> you you were talking about people getting mad. There yes. was one time when you know because Punk got to be so big. Yeah. That you know, at the beginning, Ashton was there for all of them. But then, as his career took off and he had to do seventy show and movies, it was like, well, if we wanted to get rich and Mike and Chris were helping set us up, and we could only get you at this time and this date, if yeah. he couldn't be there. We still have to do it. Like, this has to go on. Right. So The Rock, we're punking The Rock. He's shooting the movie Be Cool. The director, F. Gary Gray, is the accomplice, right? So Ashton's not there. He's doing a night shoot. So Jason Goldberg and I were running the punk that day, and we blew up The Rock's trailer. <laughs> like, his trailer for the movie <laughs> got blown up. I remember that. And as the reveal starts to come, you know, we had our two Phil agents, Whitney Cummings was one, and yeah. Vince Green was another, and they're kind of poking at The Rock, like, well, it's kind of your fault. I asked you about, like, plugging in an iron, and, it, like, they're basically insinuating it is, it's his fault, and he's right. being cool, but you could see The Rock is starting to now get more and more upset. He's cooking. Everybody's <laughs> pointing at him and saying, this is your fault, and he's talking about his Lava Lavas, which are a Samoan um, wrap that he would wear. Yeah. And finally... Our guy, Vince, who was really good at agitating people, said something to him, and The Rock kind of, like, made a move towards him. <laughs> and everybody swarmed, and then F. Gary Gray had to jump in and go, hey, Rock, guess what? You've been punked. And, like, you could see The Rock, like, seething. And it literally was about 10 seconds where he went from 100 mad to he calmed down. Okay. And then I had met him before, so I was, like, the first person from production who went up to approach him and be like, hey, bro, <laughs> everything cool, Rock? <laughs> you know? And I, I was a little bit worried about that one, but that one, you know, Ashton wasn't there for that one, and it was like... But you got a report on that, I'm sure, Ashton, by the end of the day. Uh, yeah, I, I actually got called in to, like... <laughs> the, I showed up at the very end to be like, Rock, it's all cool, right? Like, you know, Dwayne, remember when you did the 70s show back in the day? Play the professor, we're friends. So it's good. Like, I got called in at the end of it. But, that, I mean, there was some crazy I, – I mean, I thought somebody was going to get killed on the Kanye one because he took off and, like, jumped on top of a moving <laughs> car. And, like, I mean, there, there were some that, like, were borderline dangerous. I, I guess the one question as to whether or not it could be done today is legal. Because we were right on the edge of, <laughs> like, we, we always had a lawyer screaming at us in the control room I'm for sure. every one of these things. And so, you know, now, I mean, people are a little more litigious. Mm. And it, it might not be able to go off. A couple more minutes left here with Ashton Kutcher. Uh, on the anniversary of Punked, a lot of Bears fans think they are being punked right now by the signing of Andy Dalton. Are you one of them, Ashton Kutcher? Are you talking about the orange rifle? That's the one. <laughs> That one. I mean, he. Here's the thing. Like, I, yeah. My my mom always told me when I got to the dinner table, you get what you get, and you don't get upset, right? So, uh, you know, I'm looking at Andy Dalton, and I'm like, I, I always try to find like the good side of it. Um, you know, one, we we have a first round, a second round, a third round, fifth round, or I, I think like a fifth round, seventh round draft pick next year, and, and so. You know, we didn't have to give up the, the world, right? Yep. And and if we if we would have got Russell Wilson, it, it sounds like that deal would have meant giving up the giving up the franchise. We need an offensive line, like we need we need depth in our offensive line. Like Daniels went down last year, and it was obvious. Like we, it's why we had a good run at the beginning of the season, and it fell off. Is that we we're playing the offensive line shuffle game all year and because we just don't have the depth there. So I'm happy that we've got some draft picks. I'm happy that we still have some, you know, powder in the chamber. And look, if you look at Dalton, like, through his career, you know, I I think last year, like, he's always hovered around, like, a 60-plus percent completion rate. And... And, and that's good news, right? Because, you know, Trubisky, when under pressure, couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. Um, so I'm excited to have a guy that can deliver the, deliver the football on target. Um, 
And, you know, other than like that, his last year in Cincinnati, it was kind of like he knew he was out the door and it was kind of ugly. He's had, he, he's played well. Um, and, and we got Robinson. We got the franchise tag on, and, and, and Miller is great. And and Mooney is, you know, a, a really promising young talent. Yeah. So he's got some receivers. So maybe we can get an offensive line. And, we, and our defense is dope. So and we have a new defensive coordinator. That's that's a little, you know, I, I we'll see. He's been he's been with the franchise for a while. He was a safeties coach. But what you know, I I, I actually think it's a smart move. Um, all in all, given you know, we could get Russell Wilson, but he'd probably get hurt if we can't bolster our offensive line to keep him keep him upright and then and then you've spent all your draft picks and all your money on a guy who's just got hurt because you couldn't protect him all right so you're 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 being positive about it and i appreciate the glass half full right there and um you know and our radio audience is going to be going away in in about 30 seconds time and uh we'll continue this conversation on our peacock side for just a couple of minutes before we see uh, farewell to Ashton Kutcher, but we we do have uh, a segment here, Ashton, called Higher Register, where we have to kind of go up here in order to believe what we're saying. You did start a little Higher Register about Andy Dalton, like, hey, you know, I mean, he's got that sixty percent completion percent. Like, I you did go a little Higher Register on me there, Ashton. I, you know, uh, listen, is this the guy for the future of the organization? I I, I don't know, but. I also don't think that we're picking up a guy in like the what the eleventh year of his career, and thinking that this is the guy for the future of the organization. So, right. you know, he might be a guy that can can that he he's a guy that gives us a shot. I know, and, and we're back an hour three in a second, year? but sure, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know, I I hear what you're saying, you know, and I it's just I I I like your moxie, I like your your positive thinking. Ashton, I just like it. It's it's very. It's how I get through life, Rich. It's how you, <laughs> it's how you do it. Okay, so what do you think? Ten wins for the Bears? Mm. You think they actually threaten the Packers? What do you think? What do you got for me? Oh man, uh, I got, you know what? I got I have to look at the schedule. I'm not just going to throw it out there. I, I love I, I really it. need to look at the schedule. Well, it's coming out. That's coming. So you got a few more weeks, and then maybe as I was saying before, Ashton, I'll just match your positive for positive before uh, sending you off onto your Wednesday. Um, that uh, that if they draft somebody 20th overall as a rookie, what better quarterback room than having Foles and Dalton to show them the ropes to not only show them about how to be a professional, but how competition can be healthy with two awesome human beings in the room. So maybe that's something you can look at by the end of April. You know, I would like to dra- I, w- I would like to get some offensive line love in. Let's build that up for okay. a year. Say say we've got Dalton for two, and then go for a quarterback. Long game. All right, very good. Hey Ashton, thanks for the time today. Uh, uh, strolling down memory lane, and you know. Uh, um, we we uh, we're thrilled to be able to know what you've known a very long time. It's just how awesome T.J. Jefferson is, and what a great uh, what a great person he is, and how much fun he is to be around, and and just like a layer, just keep unlayering all the layers of T.J. Jefferson every single day. You know, listen, he was he was my co-pilot in 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 our fantasy football sports wow. show that we did for years he and i well i think we did like three seasons yeah. and so i knew that i knew he was destined to be doing this so i'm i'm stoked that he, that he's doing it with you outstanding yeah and it's soon he'll be above the fold in his hometown newspaper <laughs> right up in altoona he's just below the fold with us maybe together you and i ash and we can get him above the fold of the hometown altoona newspaper for when, he, when he win, when he wins price is right yes <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> yes, cliffhanger all the way through to the showcase showdown. I believe in him. Thanks for the call, Ashton. You all take right, care. You be well. Take care, guys. All right. That's Ashton Kutcher right here on the Rich Eisen Show. <laughs> We're all up in your business, TJ. Oh, yeah. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.